Hi everybody, and welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast. I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. In today's video... Yes, it. What are you doing, man? Oh. You have to wait for me. Oh, sorry. I, it, yeah, that's my bad. Sorry, guys. Here, here's Peter. Peter's going to do it. He's probably going to do it much better than me. Yeah, so, hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast, as always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today, I have a special treat for you, we've got Kelsey from 74 Gear here, and if you haven't checked out his channel, you really should, I'll be linking to it down here and also up here now. Uh, we do similar videos, but in a slightly different, we have a slightly different take of it. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, so we have similar jobs but also very very different jobs where I am a short to medium haul pilot and Kelsey you I do more long haul I'll do a 15 16 hour flight sometimes so. yeah on the queen of the sky the 747 so on the video today guys I will be asking my questions about what the best things are in Kelsey's job flying this magical aircraft so stay tuned Wind 31016, everyone right, everyone right. Delta 26, Right guys, so what we're gonna do here basically is I'm gonna ask Kelsey a little bit about his job. And it's a fantastic job as far as I did. Like it's one of those things that I've always dreamed about doing. I think any uh, anyone who grows up and wants to become a pilot ultimately sees him or herself flying the queen of the skies, the, the mighty 747. So, Kelsey, is it as good as I think it is? I mean, it's it's a beautiful aircraft, obviously, and she's actually one of the easiest planes I've ever flown. And, and, that, and that really surprises people because I think when you're when you're a new pilot, especially when you're in flight school, you're thinking this big aircraft must be so, you need so many hours to get this job, it must be so difficult to fly. And, and it's actually really easy to fly. Yeah, and I think, yeah, because it's the opposite with the 737. The 737 is actually very, very hard to both learn how to land on and do the rotations on. And I think that could have something to do with the fact that the 737-800 is stretched. Right. <laughs> like, it, it was it was supposed to be the size of the 200. Right. And the, the 200 is nice, small, looks like a little sports car. Right. While the, the 800 is this long thing. But the 747 is kind of the size that it was supposed to be. Right. Like, yeah. I mean, we got the Dash 8, which is the bigger version, but it was it's not a major modification from... And it doesn't fly significantly different than the, than the 400. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So, so let's kick this off. Um, what are your three biggest... Right? Like, what's the three best things with flying the 747? So, obviously, it was something to be said. When, when you're going to fly a 747, you know you're going to be doing long flights. And I knew that was going to happen, but... Having the long flights and getting to sleep during the flights and then having the long layovers is probably one of the best things because when I'll go to a city, it might be one day it could be in Japan and I'll have maybe a two or three days to go around and explore in that city. And that's something that's really fun because you can see, you know, every city's got its personality. Do you like it? Do you enjoy the culture? And you have enough time to really see if it's something you really enjoy doing and want to go back on your free time. You see, that's... That, but I have always been of the of of the assumption that those jobs are disappearing, that those long layovers are, are kind of disappearing. You 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 hear. I have a lot of friends flying Middle Eastern um, companies mm -hmm. that that maximizes the flight time and minimizes the rest. That's true. But but you're saying that in your job you actually get to. To, to see some stuff as well. So yeah, it's it's true. The airlines are getting a lot more efficient with how they capitalize on pilots, and because pilots want to have more time at home and less time on the road, and so they're really condensing those schedules up. But as it is right now for me, I'm getting a lot of you know, and and I bid a schedule and I bid a base and I bid some things so that I would be able to to do that. For example, right now I'm based and I'm flying the Dreamlifter, and so flying the aircraft for Boeing. It's a different schedule and Boeing makes a schedule for us. So I'll go somewhere. I might go to Japan or I might go to Italy and I'll have two or three days, which works out perfect. It gives me a chance to rest, make a video on a layover. And, <laughs> and that's been really good for me. Oh, man. And this, these, like sleeping on the plane, how do you feel about that? So the very first few flights, it was really hard for me because it's loud. And, you know, when you first start flying at your new job, there's a lot of stress and your mind's going a million miles a minute. And now I'm flying, the plane is just so second nature to me. So when it's my turn to rest, I just go back and I have a routine. I, I watch about 15 or 20 minutes of a Netflix or something like that to kind of turn my mind off. And then I have earphones and I just have everything set up in a way that I know 
If I do this, it just tells my body it's time to go to sleep and then I'll just crash out. That's actually a great point because I've, I've found that as well. People are asking, how, how can you switch from, in my schedule, I work one week early, some one week late. Okay. So how do you do that switch? And it actually has a lot to do with routines. Yeah, like you absolutely. Do, like, okay, I'm going to eat at this time. I'm going to go to my bedroom. I'm going to, like you say, do something to relax myself. It's going to be dark. It's going to be cold. It's going to be telling my body that I need to sleep. Right, basically. absolutely. Yeah, you have to figure out for yourself, and it took me a while, but you have to figure out for yourself, hey, uh, this is this tells my body it's time to, to wind down. And especially for me doing long haul, you know, I might land somewhere and it might be the middle of the day where I started and now it's still the middle of the day, but I need to go to sleep. And so I've just kind of figured out a way to let my body know, hey, now it's time to go to sleep. Man, and those bunk beds, I can't tell you how many times I've been on a long haul flight as a passenger <laughs> and wish that I could figure out how I could access those bunk beds. Because, yeah. Because that, I, that, that's my dream. Like, the, oh, when you sit there and you're cramped together in an economy seat and it's like, oh, if I could have a bed now. <laughs> what I wouldn't pay to what be I able would, to lay down. I would take my visa card out and I would pay it right now if I could just get access to that. Yeah, absolutely. No, having those bunks for sure. I mean, but not all of the long hauls. Some of the like the seven six sevens, they have, they just get a first class seat. Which I mean, I'm not putting down the first class seat. It's definitely nice, but it's not as nice as uh, some of the seven forty sevens have a stacked bunk. So it's two guys or a guy and a girl in a room, and you have a, like a curtain to separate it. And then on most of our actual freighters, though, it's a side by side. You have your own separate room and a curtain and a phone, yeah, and it's that's great. It, it's pretty nice, and you get to go out and you get into the galley and make some food and go back and can keep sleeping. Oh, that's, that's awesome! So yeah. okay, so that was number one. Number one. Okay, so number two, my number two most favorite thing is flying the 747. You're flying the queen of the skies, which means when you show up places that normally don't see the 747, you'll see. 30, 40, 50 of the people that are working at the airport out there with their phones recording you coming up. And, and it puts a smile on my face because it makes me remember all the hard work that I put in to get on this aircraft and not take it for granted. Sometimes you get a job, you know, even you, there's a lot of people that would love to get into aviation. And sometimes you take it for granted because, hey, it's what you do every day and it's your job. But, you know, when you pull up on a 747 and you have 40 people out there recording you as you pull up, you go, man, this just this is my job it is so cool that people want to film you doing it and and that that is definitely an awesome thing it is that there's no question about it like yeah. i after 17 years i've been flown the 737 i still want to go and visit the cockpit <laughs> when i fly the 74 so so yeah no there's no question about that a question for you though um do you do you taxi from the right seat yeah so in most airlines, they don't, but we do. I do taxi from the right seat. So we have tillers on both sides. Yep. Do you guys have a tiller? Oh. Yeah, we have a tiller, but only on the left side. Okay, yeah. So uh, we have tillers on both sides, and for right now, we're getting to taxi, which is which is fun. And, and that takes some thinking, because you're talking about the nose is pretty far behind, yeah. and, and some, some taxiways are pretty narrow, so you have to really think with the overall size of the plane. And that takes some getting used to. It's, you know, some people who've driven big cars, it's not that big of a deal because you're thinking about how far back, but you definitely have to have some ideas like, hey, when the line crosses my shoulder, when it hits this point of the plane, now it's time to go and and think about speeds because it's a heavy plane. And yeah, the inertia is a, is a big deal exactly. on those things. I mean, it is on the 73 already. Right. And we also have the, 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 the nose gear behind us, but of course, it's not going to be that far behind and right. it's also not going to be like a three story uh, right. yeah we're about night. 30 feet up in the air so we have a you know the ground speed is something we look at because it's hard to tell when you're that high in the air how fast you're moving mm. and i've seen sometimes when i'm flying with the czech airman i'm seeing a new guy and he's going way too fast and i'm i'm sitting in the back seat watching going any second now this check airman is going to say something because they're going too fast and they don't realize it because you're so far away from the ground yeah these are things that you don't really think about especially when you're flying your, your smaller aircraft uh even the 73 i mean we do also have a very good check on our ground speed right um but but you do get the feeling of movement there because you're you can, sitting further down you can see things moving past you absolutely yeah but flying the 74 but is something that i still want to do before they um, before they disappear. Well, I mean, I, I did a video about that talking about the cargo. They're going to keep making those Dash 8s, so those are going to be arrived for a while. But I, I actually was sitting next to a, a guy who was about to retire for American, and he was a 737 pilot, actually. And we started talking about our job riding into the airport, and he's like, man, 
I got two more years left. I just want to fly it just one time. I just <laughs> want to fly it because it's like you said, it's one of those planes that every kid had a toy plane and that toy plane is usually a 7.4. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. All right, and number three on the list of my three favorite things about flying the 747 is the variety. And what I mean by that is that I go all over the world. So today I'm in Europe. Uh, today I came out here specifically to, for a vacation and then I decided to do this video with Peter because he invited me up to his house. But in my normal schedule, I might be in Spain one day, I'll be in Australia the next day, I could go to Africa, and I have a huge variety because we go all over the world. So I'm going to places that I never even knew of or thought I would go to. I mean, I, I, I ended up going to Kazakhstan, which I had heard of, but you know, five years ago, I couldn't point it out to you on a map. And I got a layover there and it's cool, like, oh man, this is Kazakhstan, I can stay, I've been to Kazakhstan, and that's a pretty unique thing yeah. for sure. I mean, the, the thing here is that what I think you're describing, Kelsey, is, is the dream. You're, you're, you're just start, like kind of distilling down what people think about the, what they, why they want to become a pilot in the first place. Right. The traveling, the, the cool aircraft, the seeing the continents, the, the, the like everything that is cool, what people kind of envision envision when right. they want to become a pilot. Now, obviously, I do the other side of things, which is the short and the medium haul, right. which, by the way, um, we'll be talking about on your channel. Yeah. So if you are interested in seeing why I think that my job is so cool in three different steps, then you should definitely check out Kelsey's video on his channel. Uh, but my, my, like my world is equally cool, equally good, um, but for completely different reasons. Right. Which is... And it also has to do, I think, a little bit with... Are, are you married? No. All right. Are you in, in a relationship? I, I don't have any kids and I'm single. No. Yeah. So, so for me, this is the absolute best job you could possibly have. And it works out also really well because, like, for example, I know Peter, he lives here in Barcelona. I also have other friends in Barcelona. So I, could get, I get layovers in cities where I have friends. And so if I have a two-day layover in a city, you know, here in Spain... I could be like, hey, Peter, are you around? Oh, yeah, let's go grab a beer. Let's go grab some food. And, and that's pretty awesome to get basically paid to do that and visit your friends in different places in it the is, world. It is awesome. This job is awesome, guys. That's, that's kind of how we wrap this up. <laughs> but I won't wrap it up because I have more questions, Okay. actually. So, right. so those are the three reasons why flying the 747 is awesome. And I'm guessing that it's about a million other reasons as well. Yeah, I mean, it's a fun plane to fly without a doubt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and we'll, hopefully we'll get time to talk about that later on. Um, now, you on your channel, you do a lot, of, um, a lot of videos about, for example, Hollywood versus reality. Yeah, that's right. Is so and those those are awesome you definitely check them out guys um uh, now with your experience doing that mm -hmm. which hollywood movie is the most realistic that you've seen so far sully sully yeah, yeah. that that's definitely the most realistic and and i'm sure if you're watching mentor pilots channel you have seen that movie but that they did a really good job getting a lot of that right and um, actually, uh, Jeff Skiles, the first officer in that video, actually watched my video and sent, left a comment. And I was like, is that him? And I got his really? email address from a friend and sent him a message like, is that you? Did you leave it? He's like, yeah, who else would it be? I was like, okay, cool. Well, a lot know. of people it could be. Yeah, I, <laughs> I mean, sure. exactly. It could be anybody, right? Jeff Skiles, who, yeah. But yeah, I sent him a, I sent him an email and he goes, yeah, that was me. So well, that, that, cool. is, that, is, that is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I was kind of guessing that was going to be the one. Um, what about the least realistic then? Well, I mean, I haven't, I haven't done it yet, but we were talking about this earlier. Soul Plane would probably be the least realistic one that... What? Uh, Why? Yeah. <laughs> Snoop Dogg there smoking a blunt. Uh, it's just not super realistic, but there's, there's a lot of other planes that I, I haven't... A lot of other Hollywood versus reality movies that I haven't covered because they... They're just... They're, they're not anywhere near what could be real, but... There's a lot of times people don't know. There's yeah. a, there, you know, for example, in that Castaway movie, there's a scene where you know he hits that wall of water and somehow he survives without the plane getting crushed. And then there's the engine that's sitting on the top of the water. Yeah. I that video was like 20 minutes long, and I wanted to cut it down because I was like, this is getting, getting super long. No one's gonna watch this. And so I cut out that last scene, and I got a lot of comments like, how? Wait, hold on. You left out that scene. Is that real? So things that I might think of is. Okay, that could never happen. People want to know. So, 
Uh, that's how I ended up making those, start making those Hollywood versus reality videos was exactly that. People were curious to how real it, it was. Yeah, and I think that there is, there's a problem with this and, and Hollywood obviously have this problem. Yeah. is that they want to keep it as real as possible. Uh, because of people like us, we're going to be watching this and we're going to be critiquing it. And, right. But they also want to keep it as cool, flashy and as clickbaity as possible for people to actually keep watching it. So they need to see a burning engine on top of the water. They need to do something like that. Right. And, and this, is where, this is where I find it fascinating to watch this movie. Because you do get damaged. Like when you're in this occupation and you watch videos like this, you're going to be right. like that or you're going to be like that. <laughs> And, and that's why I find your video so fascinating about it, because it is a professional talking about it. You know? so, so when you watch Flight, for example, when you mm. watch him like, all right, we're just going to max blast it through the thunderstorm, are you able to appreciate, oh, this is a movie, or are you just like talking to your wife like, there's no way that that works? No, I can, I can appreciate it, okay. but I, 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 will, I, I will be sitting there and I will be kind of quietly chuckling in my head, like, like okay. yeah, I would probably not increase the speed <laughs> to maximum to go through a thunderstorm <laughs> cell. Like I flew past or in between cells just yesterday. Yeah. And one thing I was not doing was maxing the aircraft out through it because of the turbulence. So yeah, now I'll be thinking about it quietly, but I will also appreciate the kind of cinematic part of it. Yeah, because I thought that was a great movie, even though there's a lot of things that aren't realistic about it, that there are some things that were... Yeah. It was, it was a great movie. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, it was fun to watch. And that's really all you're after. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. At the end of the day, when you go into the movies, you're not asking for a documentary. You're asking to be entertained. Yeah. And, and for the most part, they do a good job with that. Absolutely. So anyway, I want to say thank you to you, Kelsey, for coming by, sitting down in my, in my uh, couch together with Pachi and me and talking absolutely. about your awesome you know, it was, job. It was an honor to get, to get the invitation to come up here. It's cool. It's cool to see things behind the scenes. You've been watching him for years, and I've been watching his channel as well. So it's cool to get to come here and, and meet the dogs and sit on the couch and see the green blanket, see the green uh, uh, pillows and the red pillows and see everything. It's really cool to get to see kind of a behind the scenes. Yeah, we'll, we'll try to do that more. Yeah, we'll do it behind the scenes. I would love to come over to you as well, actually. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll do a, next time I'm in a layover around here, then you can we'll film a video in a hotel room so you can that's, be in my comfortable oh, setting. Oh, that's true. I've done, I've done a few of those as well. Oh, yeah? Actually. Yeah, okay. yeah. Because yeah. I do my simulator weeks, you know, and I have to do oh, yeah. So I do some, some hotel room movies as well, if you're interested. <laughs> anyway, I hope, guys, that you love this. And, uh, yeah, let us, you know, let us know in the comments. Make sure that you have subscribed to the channel and you've left a like as well. And make sure that you have highlighted little notification bell. Because if you don't, you're going to miss these kind of awesome collaborations that we'll be trying to do going forward. So have an absolutely fantastic day wherever you are. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Right, guys. I really hope that you liked that. If you want more content like that, more aviation content, well then check this out. Uh, I hope that you have subscribed to the channel and that you've highlighted the little notification bell. See you inside of the Mentor Aviation app and have an absolutely fantastic day. Bye-bye.